So um, I'm going to highlight the uh, AUD implementation, but really that was uh, one piece of a larger uh, strategic plan that I had put together uh, while I, my, during my time at um, GRU. So I'm going to spend the bulk of the time on really the subtitle and then towards the end just highlight some of the AUD um, information. So uh, Gainesville Road Utilities, uh, it is in north central Florida, uh, about maybe an hour and a half southwest of Jacksonville, maybe two hours north of Orlando. Um, there's some details there on the slide, um, what Gainesville, uh, what they serve. We've got um, about 100,000 electric, 75,000 water, 41,000 natural gas uh, services. Um, and uh, we were going from ArcFM Designer to Spatial Business Systems, AUD, for design. Uh, that was just one piece of the larger puzzle. Um, each utility, each commodity has their own uh, instance in um, SQL for GIS. Uh, so electric and gas was, um, we went from 10.2 to 10.6 to 10.8 during this whole uh, strategic plan. Um, they should be at 10.8 now. Um, and then water, uh, they jumped to 10.8 a little earlier. And GRUCOM is still, uh, the fiber side, GRUCOM is uh, still at 10 one They're trying to upgrade to utility network. They've got their own project going on. For work and asset management, uh, they use CityWorks. And OSI Electra is their OMS. And for analysis, they use Synergy Electric and Synergy Gas. So all those pieces there kind of fit into, um, during my time as a GIS manager, uh, those are some of the systems that I had to support um, outside of GIS. So as he, as he mentioned, um, just a little history here for context. I'm working for 1898 now. Everything I'm presenting to you today um, is, is my time during GRU. I worked there for 24 years. Um, when I first started there, uh, we were in Esri's ARC Info coverages, uh, if you remember those, uh, way back in the day. Um, so it was pretty exciting to see basically the third generation of GIS at GRU from coverages to the geometric network and SQL. And then um, I had the opportunity to lead them to um, utility network um, recently. So that's uh, basically my resume there. Um, I submitted this abstract to Ezra UC late last year, kind of trying to get ahead of the um, abstract submission while I was still working at GRU. I was pretty excited about what we did there, how we modernized the GIS and really got us ready for the next 15, 20 years of, of GIS, the next generation, if you will. Um, so I submitted that um, abstract. Um, an opportunity came along. I joined 1898. Shortly after that, Esri notified me that my abstract was accepted. Um, unfortunately, the GRU team could not go to Esri. They have um, some travel restrictions right now. So Jim, wherever he's at, uh, co-presented with me at Esri UC, and um, they invited me here to speak to this group. Uh, thank you, SBS. Um, and I, I hope that next year GRU is up here telling the rest of the story. So wherever I leave off, I hope they, they could pick up. Okay, so this is a pretty busy slide. This uh, kind of lays a foundation. Um, when I took over as the GIS manager back in 2015, 2016, um, we had a lot going on. My predecessor had retired. Um, Everything that he had built was custom applications, custom extensions. We had ArcFM Designer. Um, he moved on to Power Engineers, and I was left with uh, this great system. It was an, what he put together was was really nicely well done. Uh, but I'm not a software developer, and he's a very talented person. And a lot of things that he built, um, they were built uh, at that time on legacy programming language. There were a lot of that was built on Visual Basic six, and Microsoft started stopped supporting that back in 2010. Uh, so I'm just gonna go through this slide here. I'm gonna spend just a couple minutes on it, just kind of highlight and lay the groundwork for the uh, strategic plan and uh, the impact these systems that I had to support uh, when I took over. So uh, at that time we had um, RTS 10.2.1, um, pretty much a direct connect to uh, the database. We had a portal set up, but it, it just, it wasn't really well used. Uh, we had ArcFM Designer, uh, ArcMap of course, um, so uh, the, the people I supported engineering and my GIS team, uh, we had direct connection to the uh, geodatabase. So over on the, uh, let's see, I can't, uh, how do I do pointer? How's that? Okay, cool. So on the gas side, um, they used ArcGIS Designer, but for their work management, they had CityWorks. That would track um, 
the state of the design, uh, in design, in construction, release to construction, all that. While over on the electric side, um, they had a, a custom application called WorkMod. That's the estimating tool. The back end was Microsoft Access Database. Uh, the front end was written with BB6, and uh, it was loosely connected with um, ArcFM Designer. Um, and also ED2 was the project tracking application. Again, that was um, you know, in design, in construction, at least for construction, the whole status of the design. Uh, and it also sets up uh, document management, if you will. It was really just drag and drop, and it would copy it over to uh, a network share. So on top of ArcFM, we had um, quite a few uh, auto updaters and other custom extensions built on top of that. Uh, the con construction print would go out to the field. That paper markup would come back to uh, the GIS team. Uh, I had a dedicated GIS uh, a gas editor and one electric editor, and also had a land-based guy uh, uh, would do uh, our easements. Uh, he would co-go our parcels in with legal descriptions. He'd support the underlying um, land base. So of course that would get uh, you know published back into um, the SDE. Uh, we had Synergy, uh, a custom extractor that uh, my predecessor had wrote um, that would um, extract out to Synergy Electric. Um, we switched from Responder to OSI Electra, so I wrote a, a custom extract for that to support that. And um, again, you know, Kevin, my predecessor, uh, he had built um, this mobile application on top of Arc Reader. We called it Navigator, but really underlying it was just uh, Arc Reader with some custom tools on top of that. And then for storms, we had this thing called RADS, Rapid Assessment for Damage. It was an extension of that Navigator application, uh, and we only used that you know, a couple times a year whenever a hurricane would come through. Um, this application only ran on Windows XP. Our IT network, of course, they would not let XP be on, um, on the network. So I literally had 50 Panasonic laptops um, in a cabinet. And throughout the year, I'd make sure the batteries were charged and everything would power on and work. And then, you know, during hurricane season, I got to pull them all out and make sure everything works and uh, use an external drive to copy file geodatabases over. Uh, so this was a lot of work uh, to maintain. And we had a small group using, um, at that time, TC Technologies GoSync Mapbook. Uh, we only had like 10 licenses of that. So basically, I had um, three. Um, Custom applications to support uh, mobile applications, some um, you know legacy applications to support. Um, and what was left behind for me was uh, 98 Python files, 80 batch files, six custom executables, dozens of auto updaters, uh, four custom applications. I mean, I had a lot going on here, and I was really overwhelmed. So uh, you know, Esri at this time was talking about the utility network. And I felt, okay, this is a time to put a plan together, um, talk to my stakeholders, get them involved, and um, you know, how do we get to utility network and bring these other systems and modernize them uh, uh, along with GIS. So I'm not gonna go into how to create a GIS uh, strategic plan. There's lots of great papers out there. Esri puts them out, some uh, industry leaders have published their own, but this is just a consolidation of everything that I read and kind of put together. The general idea is just assess, plan, and execute. Um, and along the way, especially during the execute part, I will uh, touch on that later, um, <clears throat> you know, evaluate your plan. You know, things have changed, technology have changed, leadership has changed. Um, maybe there's new ideas that have been brought up as you, as you go along. So ongoing evaluation was, was pretty critical. <clears throat> All right, so utility network. I consider that as the uh, c catalyst for change, like I said. Um, so I want to bring everything forward that I supported, and along the way, those that should own that system, for example, Synergy Electric, uh, I work with engineering, and um, you know, I wanted them to take over the extract. I wanted them to own it, own that process, budget it, work with third parties. That should not be a GIS function. Um, and system control, the extract for the OMS, things like that. I wanted, I wanted my team to focus on supporting this new enterprise web-based GIS. Um, additionally, you know, supporting a direct connection to database on ArcMap was easy, but with Esri's web-based uh, utility network, uh, I needed the help of IT. Traditionally, IT would provide servers or databases, and I would install the software on top of that. But 
with the utility network, there's just a bunch of servers in between the user and the data. So I needed IT to come in and, and learn enterprise and support the underlying infrastructure. So these are things that um, I put together for my plan. And of course, um, I'm going to talk about uh, a modern design application here. And uh, so specifically around AUD, that's just one portion of the overall project. Uh, these are some of the things that I identified from my point of view after working with you know, operations staff, field crews. Um, these are things that I felt from my experience at GRU uh, were some of the design challenges. Uh, of course, we had um, you know, customizations that were added over many years. Uh, it was loosely integrated with some other applications that were on legacy code that no longer supported. Um, the person had retired. IT doesn't want to take over that, so I had to come up with a plan to modernize that. You know, Schneider Electric, great product. It served its purpose. Uh, oh. oh, thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> Schneider is a great product. Nothing against them. Um, but we had to come full circle. Um, designing a GIS uh, was okay, but it had its limitations. Um, when I first started there in 99, my role, one thing that I had to do was convert a CAD file into uh, the GIS. So coming full circle back to AUD uh, was pretty exciting. Uh, having Esri and Autodesk partner up um, was really, uh, it, was, it was a good idea. And uh, some of the things that AUD brings to the table uh, for the engineering group um, was, one way for us to get out of GIS-based uh, designing. So one member of my team had spent quite a bit of time uh, in ArcMap, ArcFM Designer. All these outside firms would, you know, give us CAD drawings. He'd have to take time to convert it. You know, all the block layers and just, just the mess that comes with CAD sometimes. Uh, it took a lot of time for him to convert, prepare it so that the uh, engineering group can have that as a uh, underlying um, base layer. Uh, and because it's, you know, GIS-based designing, the engineering group relied on my team to support them. If uh, they got some kind of weird message or something, it wasn't IT that solved it. It was one of us that had to jump in and, and try and figure out what the problem was and then work with Esri or Schneider to figure out the problem. Um, and, you know, Schneider, they, again, they've got an ARC FM 11, good product. I'm not bashing it. Uh, but for me, as a GIS manager, um, it would have been three times the work because they took ArcFM Designer and broke it out into basically three different applications. Um, and then they had this tenant service concept. Um, I wasn't really uh, happy about that. It required internet service. Sometimes internet goes down. And being a utility, you always want to be worried about um, connectivity outside your network. So this is the plan I put together. I called it One GIS. That aligned with an IT initiative at that time called One SAP. Um, and S the one SAP was about expanding uh, SAP products throughout the organization, and I wanted to uh, expand GIS throughout the organization. It's always been considered a, uh, a niche application with under engineering. It wasn't really looked at as an enterprise uh, solution for the organization. So <clears throat> phase one was really just laying the foundation. Let's get to a supported version. Um, let's get everybody on a single um, mobile platform one mobile viewer, one um, brand of, of laptops, because everybody had a different laptop, different capabilities. Some didn't have GPS. Some didn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So um, <clears throat> that was part of the, the phase one plan. It was really the foundation. So the bulk of the work was in phase two. Um, earlier, I talked about evaluating your uh, plan. So when we put this together, 10.7 was out. By the time we got to phase two, 10.8 was out. <clears throat> um, and I had to educate and train, um, you know, the stakeholders with each stage because I had to reinforce the idea of why are we going to the utility network? Why are you making me change all these applications? Um, you had to reinforce that going through. And then um, down here, of course, we're going to replace the, um, the design application. So I'm not going to go through this everything bit by bit, but that's basically phase one results. Um, I keep stating it, but you know we've been on this system for 20 years. Uh, educate the stakeholders, remind them why we're going through all this effort. We're trying to plan for the next 15, 20 years. Um, so we had some vendors come in. Um, in order for us to have one mobile platform or one mobile viewer, I wanted 
um, and an app uh, hardware set that would fit the, the requirements of different people across the organization, but also one platform to support with this GIS viewer or maybe do some field editing or something. Uh, so we chose Panasonic, um, a menu of devices basically, so the organization based on their user group, you know, they might want this style or a laptop or maybe, you know, a tablet. Um, and all these had um, GPS, um, Bluetooth, cameras, that was important for the field mobile part. So when you're doing damage assessment, you can see yourself on the map, select that pole, and then uh, do the, the damage assessment. All right, so um, part of your strategic plan when you implement it, you know, show off those early successes. Um, for me, the priority number one was to replace the damage assessment um, application after we had um, the mobile laptops kind of figured out. Um, in the summer before Irma showed up, we stood up this um, third-party application and integrated it with ArcGIS um, operations dashboard. So they'll go out in the field, do the assessment, and then in real time, you could see um, the damage that's, that's being assessed. So we showed success very early. That's, it's really important, kind of keeps the momentum going and justifies you know, your expenditures. <clears throat> so uh, we also had a document, current and future state. What's the problems now? Where do you want to be in the future? Um, I blurred this out because it's not really important what's on here. It's just that we've identified um, in this particular workflow um, a lot of manual steps. And this is more around um, uh, system control and dispatching uh, incidents to the, to the trouble crews. And then what happens downstream once that work gets closed out and makes its way to engineering or uh, T&D for any kind of follow-up work. So eventually, we actually got this down to just seven manual steps um, during this plan. All right, so more uh, current state, future state. This document on the left, or this diagram, um, is a lot of work comes out of, you know, outage management, incidents happen, there's follow-up work that has to happen after, you know, power is restored or whatever happens. Maybe something uh, gets follow-up work for vegetation management. Maybe there's follow-up work for engineering, do reliability studies. So before, we had um, a lot of emails and text messages, and it was, it was a mess. So with CityWorks, what we did is we wanted uh, the trouble crews, whether it's blue sky or gray sky, and that's how we say if it's just daily work or storm work, um, whatever it was, the trouble crew and the dispatcher, they use their applications. So the dispatcher, they stay in uh, OSI Electra. We hooked, out, ho hooked that up with CityWorks. Uh, so they would dispatch through OSI, it'd create a work order in CityWorks, and whether it was a storm or anything else, the trouble crew had the same form, same process, nothing different for them. And then during Gray Sky, um, the assessors would go out with their phone. Um, again, the dispatcher would dispatch that incident in o, uh, OSI. It'd go to the assessor on, on the CityWorks mobile. Um, they would do the assessment. Uh, it would update operations dashboard. Um, that would go back to system control, and that same work order would then be redispatched to the trouble crew because it had all the notes and the photos and everything about what the assessors saw. So that same work order would go to the trouble crew, they'd restore power, fix it, close out um, the uh, incident, and then there might be some follow-up work later after the storm or just after that you know, routine work that might happen. So from there, the, um, the work order could be passed engineering. That might make its way to AUD. Um, or maybe there's a child work order that goes for vegetation management or some other issue that uh, T&D needs to look at. And then, of course, that work order will make its way to GIS for, for posting. The one on the right, um, that's just a larger, what I call a funnel diagram. Everything over here on the left is that one little purple box there, what happens um, in outage management. Um, so wherever work comes in, it goes into CityWorks Work Order Center. Uh, it might make its way to engineering for some AUD work, or that work order might make its way down to T&D, and then finally, you know, accounting, closeout, and so on. All right, phase two results. Uh, again, I'm not going to go over the details here, but um, earlier I said evaluate your plan as you go through this. Uh, the check marks here are where we uh, reevaluated the plan and made some changes. Um, by the time we got to this phase here, um, the third-party app that we had, um, Esri had pretty much consolidated, you know, Survey, ArcGIS um, Collector, and these other apps into uh, FieldMap. Um, 
we were putting a lot of customizations back in that third-party app, kind of getting away from our original intent to uh, mitigate uh, customizations. So uh, we switched to using field maps instead of the third-party viewer. Plus, our contract was ending and had some budget constraints, so it was just a natural fit. Uh, leadership changes down in uh, T&D. Uh, we had Panasonic laptops down in T&D. Um, but when a new manager came in, uh, he was an uh, Apple fan, so they switched to iPhones and iPads. And like I said earlier, um, when we first put the plan together, 10.7 was out. By the time I got to this stage, 10.8 was out. And that third-party app was going to be kind of like the one-size-fits-all, but, um, you know, we kind of cut that out of the plan. And um, a good friend of mine and co-worker, Josue Sanchez, um, he had entered or recommended AUD. So we took a look at that, uh, showed it to the engineering group and the managers, and um, we kind of redirected our plan to implement AUD during phase two. All right, so I'm going to go through these pretty quick um, so I can get to the AUD part. Uh, this is just highlighting how we integrated um, CityWorks and ArcGIS with OMS. Uh, earlier, I kind of walked through the process diagram. Well, this is the actual dashboard from uh, Hurricane Ian. Um, this dashboard is, is connecting four different systems, our, um, our AVL, the Automated Vehicle um, Tracking System from Verizon. Uh, it's, it, there is a, um, a feature service that gets published. It's a trigger from OMS into ArcGIS Enterprise. It creates the point features here for the customer that's out and the incident that caused that customer to be out. Uh, we're leveraging CityWorks eGirls, again, just out-of-the-box capabilities, just publish that. And you can see here um, that little wrench there has come from CityWorks. And then any damaged locations that are being done on the um, device in the field gets updated here. I think there's one there. And then, of course, there's a bunch of panels here. These are all interactive. You click on them. It's just standard ArcGIS Enterprise. Click on it, more pop-ups. You can get to other websites and things, get more details. But... This was the Alps dashboard for uh, Hurricane Ian. Okay, so now we get into the AUD work. Um, so we replaced uh, our custom in-house ED2 application, project tracking. We put that into CityWorks. Um, earlier I talked about maybe uh, an incident might come from outage management. A child work order is created. Well, that's this screen here. You can create the child work order. And then based on the work order type that you're creating, it would automatically apply the correct SAP WBS network number to that work order. Maybe that work order type had certain tasks that others don't have. Um, it will apply those tasks. And then this is the screen that the um, engineer supervisor or the engineer design tech might see. Um, the header information, and you, know, you can really dig into it. I'm not going to go into CityWorks, but just that um, we've integrated this with AUD. So in AUD, um, they can stay in AUD, they can hyperlink, and then open up uh, the CityWorks work order for more information. It's really just a connector. Um, AUD doesn't store that information. It just allows you to get to uh, your work management system. All right, so reemphasizing utility network was a catalyst for change. Um, we changed a lot of systems. AUD was one of them. Uh, this diagram here is kind of simplified of, of the improve, improvements that we made. Uh, on the left is the previous workflow. So the engineer tech actually had to work with four different applications. Supervisor or manager also had to work with four different applications. Um, you know, they actually would literally open these applications, go to them, and, you know, enter duplicate work. And it was just a lot of uh, lost productivity because it's inefficient. So on the right, um, we introduced Power BI. Um, although CityWorks can do reporting and things, Power BI was becoming the organization's reporting tool. So we uh, leverage Power BI to connect with CityWorks to do um, you know, the graphs and things that Power BI brings. So the engineer tech now just stays in SBS. Um, CityWorks data is pulled in. It's not pushed out. Uh, we didn't want that to happen. It would have been too complicated. So there's a routine that pulls in CityWorks data for um, the AUD user. Uh, of course, um, our estimating tool, that's where our compatible units lived. AUD would push and pull there. Um, as said, you know, many times yesterday, AUD doesn't do costing, uh, so we pushed that out to WorkMod for costing. And then um, at that time, our IT group wouldn't let us, you know, get into SAP. They would create a, um, 
um, an extract, if you will, in HANA, and that would be the actual database that Power BI would pull in. So for me, from the GIS side, this was really great stuff uh, for my team. Uh, we no longer had to support a um, GIS-based design tool. It's AutoCAD-based. It's a really good engineering tool underlying with some really neat uh, AUD stuff on top. So uh, the user would pull in the utility network and all the land-based services underneath. Uh, they do their part, they would publish it, and then my team would pull that in through the UDH um, ribbon in Pro. So my team stayed in Pro, engineering group stayed in AUD. We didn't have to learn each other's um, uh, applications. And of course, that would just go round and round. And uh, this really solved a long time problem for us is partial posting. So with Utility Network, you get this life cycle um, status. Um, so now my team could do partial posting. Uh, doing it in Schneider Arc FM Designer is kind of clunky. It could be done, but it, it was a lot of work. Um, so this was really great. Now our, our system control loved it because um, now we can see, okay, it's been constructed, but not energized. It's now energized. Um, we had our own internal locators group. So now they can see what's being designed, what's been built, if it's been energized. So that's a really good way to communicate to the organization um, the partial posting. All right, so how do we actually transition from the geometric network to the utility network? Um, so I set up uh, basically two enterprise stacks on different infrastructure. Uh, so over here, we got the 1061, all the daily work um, happened here while we stood up um, 1081 on utility network. This was not used for about a year because I wanted my team to fully understand the utility network. We did uh, training together. We actually sat in a conference room. We took Esri training classes on pro and utility network. Um, I want to make it like a, like a team building effort. So I wanted my team to fully understand utility network because we had to support <clears throat> uh, all these other you know, departments. So we had that up and running, and I wanted this in place before AUD came in line and before um, the effort over here for these uh, other systems um, started using the utility network. So <clears throat> the geometric network on 1061, get that up and running, understand the utility network, uh, do all the workshops with SBS, um, and Locana was, was one of the partners um, with that. So uh, get that up and running um, with the workshops, and then at some point, um, you know, sync over one more time and then cut off any new designs over here. Whatever designs live in geometric network, uh, that paper as built then would come over to the uh, GIS or, or gas or electric editor. Uh, so that paper as built would then be hand entered into um, the UN. And then at some point just cut this off. Um, and I said earlier that the GIS folks, I didn't, I didn't want to support these external systems anymore. I wanted my team to be data stewards of the data and let these departments come in and consume uh, what they needed. So, uh, you know, engineering, they work with DNV to uh, update their extractor. Uh, system control, uh, they work with a third party to develop an extractor for OMS out of the UN. Uh, so one more slide here. Why choose AUD? I kind of highlighted it um, throughout the, the slides here. Um, I saw this a big... This was, this was big, uh, the call-outs, you know, and, and, and I'm not bashing Schneider, it's a good product, but the, the graphic tool to create call-outs, it was every, every work location, there was a hand enter into the, into the call-out. With AUD, you just configure it, and it just pops right in. That was, I think, one of the big ones <clears throat> for the uh, engineering group. Of course, it supports utility network. That was, you know, a requirement for uh, replacing it. Uh, it could pull in city works. Um, my team had its own ribbon to pull in that data and, and work with it and do the as-built. <clears throat> uh, and like I said, GIS stays in pro, engineering stays in AUD. We don't have to learn each other's systems, um, CAD-based. So with the utility network, I wanted us to be able to go out in the field and use any device, you know, Apple, Android, whatever. So the UN comes with its own symbol set. Um, and that symbol set was very different from what we've been using for the previous 20 years. We actually had a custom uh, font file uh, to create our own symbol set. So, um, you know, engineering and construction, they get to keep their symbols. And then once we go to the mobile side, you know, people have to learn that. But for construction, uh, it, I think it's pretty important that they, they don't do that, that switch to a whole new symbol set. Um, <clears throat> so that, that, was, that, was, that was good. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, so now my team didn't have to convert the, um, the DWG or DXF anymore. Engineering can just pull that in right from the developer, kind of increases the, uh, the productivity and, and decreases that, that time to convert data and then give it back to the engineering group. Uh, partial posting for my team was great. And then looking ahead, of course, UN is 3D ready. Uh, so again, looking ahead the next 15 years of, of your GIS, you know, maybe don't see a use case now for that, but um, you know, maybe at some point you could do the augmented reality and things and you know, the cool stuff that's coming along in the future.